With the recent update allowing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet to connect to Pokemon Home, Draft League is at an all-time high. After joining the WPF, I was also fortunate enough to be invited into the BBR after playing in the D-League last season. We have an incredible lineup this season with names we haven't seen in a while, which is super exciting. If you're new around here, hey, I'm Jay Ricky. I've been playing Draft League for years now, and I am looking to produce the best quality content possible, so if that sounds up your alley, hit the subscribe button and consider liking the video. After getting the first overall pick in the WPF, I was actually given the first pick in this draft as well, which is insanely lucky. With this first pick, I wanted to pick up something that could do multiple things and do them well. I could have picked something like Palafin or Chien Pao, but those mons are a bit boring to me. I decided to pick up something that would be fun to build with, so I decided to pick up Iron Valiant. Iron Valiant has an incredible stat distribution and an incredible move pool, not to mention its fairy and fighting typing is probably one of the most broken typings in the game. It can function as a sweeper or as a breaker, it can go physical, it can go special, it is fast, there isn't much this thing can't do. Now, I've yet to see someone explore Iron Valiant to its fullest, so hopefully we can go ahead and do that ourselves. I now had to wait 30 picks before being able to pick again, which is one of the downsides to being first overall, so we have to make the most out of all our wheel picks. There are only a couple of things that Iron Valiant really struggles with, mainly being poison and fairy types. These two types can resist Iron Valiant's attacks and knock it back in return, so in order for Iron Valiant to shine, I wanted to pick up something that could deal with those easily, and I picked up the best possible pairing, Heatran. Heatran has been a top Pokemon for its entire existence, starting all the way back in Gen 4. Its fire and steel typing just complements Iron Valiant to perfection. Anything Iron Valiant is weak to, Heatran resists. It's crazy how well they work together. Heatran is just one of those Pokemon you can bring to any matchup, and it will play a role no matter what. It can do basically anything you want it to do. Now, it did lose stuff like Toxic and Eruption, but it still has so many options, so I'm not too worried about it. It's a reliable Stealth Rocker, a Magma Storm Trapper, and with 130 base special attack, it can also hit extremely hard. With the next pick, I had initially gotten Zapdos, but after thinking about it for a little bit, I don't think Zapdos is my type of Pokemon. It lost Defog and Toxic, so I don't think I'd be able to use it well. So I cooked up a trade with John Jr. and acquired Hydreigon in the process. Hydreigon also pairs super well with Iron Valiant and Heatran, both offensively and defensively. It's able to take some pressure off of Iron Valiant and Heatran to be special breakers, as it can do it itself. It's also something else for fairy types to focus on, and this might allow Iron Valiant to shine a bit more. In general, it's just a really solid Pokemon that, again, has a lot of versatility. It can be ran offensively or defensively, even though losing Roost is kind of a big deal. It can be physical with DD sets, and it's also our Terra Captain, and we're going to be able to Terrestrialize Hydreigon into Dragon or the Poison Typing, which is going to be great. Round 4 and 5 are usually where I like to pick up my bulk. Not that my team is frail at the moment or anything, but I want to build a solid defensive core. So my next two picks are going to be Slowbro and Clawsire. Let's talk about Slowbro first. There aren't many bulky water types I like using this gen, but after Seeing John Jr. using this derp face last season, I thought I'd give it a try. I mean, if John can use it well, then how hard can it be? Teleport not being in the game is a big nerf for Slowbro, and for some reason it doesn't get chilly reception either but Regenerator is still a busted ability. With its good stat distribution, it can serve as a sponge to many hits, and its move pool allows it to do some interesting stuff. Now, admittedly, I'm not a huge fan of Claude's Iron. It's cute and all, but I don't usually draft these type of Pokemon that can become set of fodder. But I looked at the board and the things that my team still needed, and Claude's Iron just fulfilled so much. It's a ground type, it's a grounded poison type, it has a lot of hazards, it has two really good abilities, it has reliable recovery. Like, it's just a lot of things, so I figured, what the heck, let's pick it up and see what we can do with it. After waiting 30 picks, I looked at the team and decided I needed a good physical breaker so Iron Valiant doesn't have to do it, and I also wanted something that was a bit faster than Iron Valiant. Let's talk about the physical breaker I picked up first, and I'm actually very happy I got this Pokemon because it is one of my favorites, and that is Big Rillaboom. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Gen 9 Rillaboom sucks. Well, shut up, little Timmy. Nobody asked you anyway. Rillaboom did lose a lot of good tools this gen. It lost the one move that made it really broken in Grassy Glide. It also lost superpower and high horsepower, which do hurt it. I think Rillaboom can still function as a very solid wall breaker. No matter what, Woodhammer in Terrain still nukes a lot of things. It also still has Knockoff, which is a hot commodity this gen, 
and it's still able to hit steel types with like low kick or stopping tantrum on top of all of this though the biggest thing it offers to my team is grassy terrain which heatran and claude's Iyer are going to love if you are a rillaboom believer go ahead and leave a like on this video as for speed i picked up kilowattril trading zapdos for hydreigon actually worked out really well for me because i was able to get the better version of zapdos kilowattril has 125 base speed and provides me with a nice electric immunity electric flying is just a good typing overall defensively and offensively unfortunately it doesn't have defog but it still has roost for bulkier sets it's also something that is able to grab me momentum as it has both u-turn and volt switch so i think it's a solid pickup for the team now at this point in the draft i planned out exactly what i wanted and i realized i had a ton of points left over i don't know if it's just me but i feel like our budget of 120 points may have been a little bit too much regardless i looked at the board and decided to pick up the most expensive thing still available and that was Tyranitar. As crazy as it may sound, I don't think I've ever drafted Tyranitar, as far as I can remember at least. You might be thinking, Tyranitar is a weird fit on this team. I won't necessarily disagree with you. Again, I picked it up because I had a lot of points left over. But there are some things it can offer to the team. First of all, if I ever want to tear on my Hydreigon, I still have another Dark type. Residual damage with Sand might also help chip things into Iron Valiant range. Not to mention, Titar is a great physical breaker with 134 base attack that can also run special sets. It's another Pokemon that has just been good since it's been a thing. I don't think we can go wrong with Tyranitar. Next up, I picked up Tauros Paldea Blaze. I did want to get the water one instead, but Gravy took it before I could, which is less than ideal. I'm not even going to try to hide it. I mainly picked it up so I have something for a potential Chien Pao matchup. I also saw Kirby get swept by it once, and that was funny, so maybe we might be able to pull it off. My last two picks to round out this draft were Houndstone and Vigoroth. Houndstone was always in my plan, even without Tyranitar. Obviously, it cannot run last respects, but bulkier sets with Fluffy can still be very good in certain matchups. The last pick of the draft was Vigoroth. Now, I got sniped of Komala and Wigglytuff, which is when you know you are down bad. I think Vigoroth has decent stats and it has slack off, so that's something. So that's our team. I'm pretty confident with it, and I am super excited to take on all these amazing coaches. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you all next week. Peace.